conspiracy theorists have postulated that, in fact, man did not land on the moon. Um, that, in fact, it was fate, whether it was a soundstage somewhere in NASA or you know, whatever it was. And they, in fact, look at this image and they use it as evidence to suggest that the moon landing was faked. So using some technology that we've been developing, we thought we would take a stab at proving the truth or the, the fiction behind the moon landing. And we've invented a bunch of cool technology with Maxwell to do this in real time. So this, in fact, is a real-time recreation of that image. So let's go ahead and, and show that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, to create this image, we've had to create, uh, do an extraordinary amount of research and invent an extraordinary amount of technology. What you're seeing here is a fully modeled, materially correct, physically based representation of the limb and Buzz, Buzz Aldrin. When we started creating this, the first conspiracy theory that people tend to point to is the fact that you can see Buzz. And the conspiracy theorists say, well, since the sun is on the far side of the limb, Buzz should be in the shadow of the limb, and therefore you shouldn't be able to see him. He should be in shadow. And so that's what that would look like. And in fact, if the world only responded to direct light, meaning the, the light coming just from the sun, they'd actually be correct. But of course, that's not how light works. Light bounces. The light bounces off the surface of the moon, light bounces off the limb, light bounces back and forth, and that's why you get what's called indirect illumination. The light from the sun bounces off the surface of the moon and in turn you know, hits Buzz and illuminates him. To do this, we have to actually be doing real-time indirect lighting. To even get this right, though, we have to understand a great deal about the material properties of really everything involved because different materials reflect light in a different way. So we've actually studied and based physical materials off of the actual materials used on the limb. So we've modeled those here, from the foil to the paper to the rivets, literally everything. And so as we kind of pan around here, one of the things that we notice is there's a surprising amount of foil, and literally it looks like tin foil on the limb. And in fact, it's a little bit shocking. Not only was it a miracle that we landed on the moon, but after we studied the limb itself, I think it's a miracle that it took off. Because if you look at it, literally there's places where there's wadded up foil over joints. There's literally tape holding things together. Um, in fact, the surface of the limb itself is only a sixteenth of an inch thick in some places, and yet we landed and took off. So we had to learn a great deal about the material, not only of the limb, the limb, the lunar module, but actually of the surface of the moon itself. It has some pretty interesting properties. Lunar dust, or regolith, is a crystalline silt. It's a very fine silt. And a lot of people think that it reflects a great deal of light. In fact, when we first set out on it, we actually thought that it would be almost like snow. Like it'd be this blinding white light. But when we did the research, it turns out that, that regolith, or lunar dust, reflects only about 12% of the light that strikes it. In computer graphics ease, that's called the albedo. How much light is reflected from, from the geometry, or from the, from the material. But it has another really interesting property. It's not just that it reflects 12% of the light, but it's this crystalline silt. It's faceted. And when the light strikes it in a, basically a directly opposing angle, so when the sun shoots kind of directly at it, it in fact reflects considerably more light than normal. That's called opposition surge. And this has been studied, studied a great deal. In fact, you can kind of experience this for yourself during a full moon. During a full moon, when you look into the, side, the, moon, the sky, the moon reflects more than twice as much light than when it's waxing or waning, and that's because the sun is closest to a direct angle and bouncing more light back. That's called opposition surge. And so in our recreation here, the reason there's this kind of bright white spot on, this, on the, the lunar regolith here is in fact because of the opposition surge. This property that causes the, the lunar material to reflect more light when the light hits it directly. Now, of course, there's a light source up here on the moon, and that light source, of course, the primary light source is the sun. This is the dawn of another one of those controversies. We, of course, since we're recreating this in real time, we can move the light source around it. So we can move the sun, and we create realistic shadows, and the light bounces in different ways. And it, I mean, frankly, it just looks pretty darn cool. But when you look at the sun, the sun, of course, is shooting a light onto the surface of the moon. And one of the other interesting properties of the moon is it has no atmosphere. 
which means that an enormous amount of light reaches the surface of the moon. And in order to take a good photograph of the moon, you need to adjust the exposure of your camera, or if you're using your eye, your pupil, to let in only enough light so that you can see what you want to see. And there's an enormous amount of light reaching the moon. And they, they look at this and they go, well, geez, you know, I can see the moon, I can see Buzz, I can see the limb, but I don't see any stars. And because those kind of canonical photographs of a lunar landing don't have stars in the sky, the conspiracy theorists say, ah, they faked it. They couldn't figure out how to do the stars, and so there's just no stars, and so, haha, yet another evidence that they didn't land on the moon. But in fact, there are. So if we look up into the sky, and we adjust the exposure, and we let our eye, our pupil, let more light in, or the lens of the camera, or the shutter, let more light in, in fact, over time, you'll see that, in fact, there are stars in the sky. In fact, we had 80, the database of the 84,000 nearest stars modeled in the sky. The reason you don't see them when you're looking at the surface of the moon is that you had to adjust the exposure, and these are so far away, they don't, they don't contribute enough light that you can see them. But if we adjust the exposure of our camera or our eye to let more light in, you can see the stars in the sky. Now, if, of course, if you just take that and then you look back down at the sun, ah, you know, the future's too bright, you need shades. That's exactly as it should be, right? We're letting in enough light that we can see the stars, but everything else is completely blown out which is exactly how camera exposure works or how your eye works. That's why on the photographs of the moon landing, you don't see the stars because they've had to adjust the exposure so you can see what's going on. So we've learned about the materials of the limb. We've learned about lunar dust. We've learned about the stars in the sky. And we worked very hard to kind of match that kind of canonical photograph of Buzz landing on the moon. So if we can kind of get back to that, that, that pose. Can you, can you bring us back to the main pose there? There we go. We worked very hard, and while we got super close, it wasn't quite right. We just couldn't quite figure out what was going on. The light was bouncing, we had the materials right, we had everything else going on, but it wasn't quite, it seemed a bit too dark. And that actually basically brought up one of the other controversies. And if we can cut back to the last frame of the video, you notice, and I don't have a laser pointer, maybe I do have a laser pointer. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, so cool. <laughs> what is that? In fact, that bright white light source is another thing that the conspiracy theorists have pointed at. They say there's a second light source up on the moon. And how could that possibly be? It's just the sun. You know, did someone set up a, a, you know, a bunch of lights and run some extension cords and power, power up a bunch of fluorescence or something? You know, but it's unquestionable. On video, there it is, a big, bright, white light source. What could that possibly be? So if we go back to our recreation, by the way, that camera angle, the reason that camera angle is there is that there's a crazy Rube Goldberg contraption that flops out of the side of the limb that had a camera on it so that when Neil Armstrong stepped off the moon, they could get a video of him. And it was this crazy little mechanical arm. It's amazing that it works. So we've modeled that here. And we're in exactly the same camera position. And in this case, we're looking at Buzz as he steps down. And so, hmm, what is it? Well, it turns out that there actually was a second light source on the moon. So we can prove that conspiracy theories, but it's not what you think it is. In fact, the second light source was, it was Neil Armstrong. In fact, Neil Armstrong is the person who took that picture. Neil Armstrong, in fact, is the second brightest light source on the surface of the moon at that time, because it turns out the suits that the astronaut wore used a material called beta cloth, which reflects about 90% of the light that strikes it, which makes them a huge reflector, or a huge source of light. In fact, he's almost glowingly bright white. So if you move back into the pose where we're looking at Buzz, and we toggle Neil's presence on and off, you can kind of get that last extra bit of bounce light which gets you to that image which is you know, more true to the, the true photograph that everyone's familiar with. In fact, we were able to position Neil perfectly accurately by recreating the positions from the camera and the light to place him exactly where he was. And of course, if we're bouncing light, let's go ahead and take a look at Neil's face mask. One of the things that just kind of falls out of that is you get reflections. And so, of course, in the helmet of Neil here, you've got the reflection of the limb and the reflection of Buzz Aldrin as he steps off the moon. We've had to create an enormous amount of technology to create this. The technology to do this is actually the ability to propagate indirect light or do real-time global illumination in real, in real time. And this is a true first. And Maxwell is something that allows us to do this. We've created algorithmic technology and hardware technology and the architecture of Maxwell that makes this possible. So let's go ahead and kind of step back to the, to the photograph. And then if we can go to the slides. 
That, in fact, is the photograph, the actual photograph of the lunar landing. And if we maybe just go forward one here, and that's our recreation. I think we did pretty good. Cool. <laughs> to me, this is a pretty big milestone. For the first time, we're able to truly physically model light as it propagates through a scene, the material correctness of surfaces, and we're able to do that entirely in real time. That's a pretty big deal. It may not be quite as big a deal as landing on the moon, but you know, maybe it's a close second. <laughs> um, to do that, the technology we had to create is called VXGI, or Voxel Global Illumination. 